We've got yet another budget PC for all you gamers and creators. This is one of the best selling budget pre-builds and in this 100% honest and unbiased review, I'm excited to be sharing with you everything that you need to know about the iBuyPower Slate Mesh. In this video, I'm gonna quickly zip you through the unboxing and what's included, take you through some of the most thorough gaming and creator benchmarks that you've ever seen, VR tests, talk about the design and build quality, the internals, thermals, fan noise, overall ease of use, as well as my top pros and cons. This model that I'm reviewing for you today includes an Intel i7-12700F processor, an MSI RTX 3060 GPU, and 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz DDR4 RAM. I cover this machine very thoroughly, so I can confidently say by the end of this video you will know if this machine is right for you or not if you watch the whole thing but if you still have any questions after watching this entire video just shoot me a comment and if you're publicly subscribed i guarantee a personal response but first let's jump back to about a week ago and check out the unboxing let's check out this small box first Got our gaming mouse, an extremely shiny sci-fi looking mouse. The clicks and the scroll wheel feel pretty good though. A little too shiny for my taste, but let's check out the keyboard. Pretty typical membrane gaming keyboard. The keys feel pretty solid. Looks like we've got some RGB capabilities as well. And then we've got your user manual with a ton of keyboard and mouse shortcuts. But let's put that away and get onto the exciting stuff. Got a little bag that fell. And inside it's got our power cable, our two antennas for Wi-Fi. Got some instructions on how to remove the foam on the inside of the PC. All the information that you're gonna need as far as connectivity and all your ports. Thanks for that. I wasn't exactly sure how to plug it in and turn it on. And then a thank you for purchasing an iBuy Power PC. And then a bunch of technical support options over on this side. Now, when it came to the design, for me personally, I think it looks cool, but it's honestly probably my least favorite out of all the budget pre-builds that I've tested. The RGB is balanced well throughout the case, but I personally am not a fan of the crisscross grill design on the front, nor do I really care for the logo, honestly. For the ports on the top, we have a power button, two USB 2.0 ports, a headphone and microphone jack, and a USB Type-C port. And on the back, a PS2 port if you have an older keyboard or mouse, two USB 2.0 ports, and an HDMI port, and then two more USB USB 2.0 ports, four USB 3.0 ports, and an ethernet jack, your two connectors for Wi-Fi antennas, your microphone port, line out, and line in. And then on the back of the 3060 GPU, an HDMI port, and three display ports. Now moving on to inside the chassis, you can see at the front we've got three 120 millimeter intake fans that pull fresh air from outside the case and direct it through all these components and quickly carry all the heat that they generate out this rear exhaust fan. Next to that is our heat seek fan combo for our i7-12700 F CPU, followed by two sticks of 8 gigabyte Neo Forza DDR4 RAM with speeds of 3200 megahertz. I've never heard of this brand. And then right underneath our CPU is our Western Digital SN570 solid state drive, which is actually our main drive that everything, including the operating system, is installed on. And then we've got a slot for an additional one here in the bottom corner as well. The most important piece right here in the middle, though, which is our itty bitty MSI GeForce RTX 3060 GPU. Very light and kind of feels a little little cheap in your hands. And at the bottom inside here is our 600 watt power supply. And then removing the panel on the opposite side of your case reveals the back of your CPU, some brackets for supplemental 2.5 inch hard drive, your cable management, and at the very bottom, a three and a half inch, one terabyte Barracuda hard drive. There's also room for another one right next to it. That would honestly get a little too close for comfort to that bottom front chassis fan though. Now, when I first bought this PC, it was $1,300, but it's actually dropped about $50 since then. This 
puts it at about $100 less than this similar spec Cyberpower Gamer Extreme that I've also reviewed, and a little over $300 less expensive than that Skytech Kronos PC. That one with a 3070 GPU though. The most important factor when buying a gaming or creator PC though is the price to performance ratio, and we're gonna get to that here in a sec. Now for those of you that would like to fine tune the performance of this machine and possibly do some overclocking, there's not that much that you can do within Windows, but you do have a bit of control within the BIOS. This is accessible by hitting the delete button when you're turning on your computer. Here you can overclock RAM, push your CPU a little harder, and adjust your fan profiles, or set their speeds manually if you want to. I do advise you to be careful with these settings though, unless you really know what you're doing. Now as far as the fan noise goes, in quiet mode it was hitting around 41.8 decibels. And then when moving up to performance mode, it brought the fan noise up to about 44.5 decibels. And then when pushing all the fans to the max at full speed, we got one decibel more at 45.5 decibels. Pretty average as average gets here. Quite a bit less than the CyberPower PC and HP Omen 25L in full speed mode though. Now for the thermals, you can see in our thermal imaging test that the majority of the heat is radiating from the heat sinks on the side of the GPU. A good amount of heat is released and dissipated via this top vent, but I'd say the majority of it gets quickly sucked out this back vent. I also did some extensive testing in gaming as well. These were our CPU temps for six different games at 1080p. It actually had nearly the hottest temps, second to the CyberPower PC, which should have been hotter considering it's more powerful. Now, the GPU test at 1080p showed temps weren't crazy high, but they were still pretty surprisingly hot considering they had the least powerful GPU out of all the budget PCs that I've tested. Now, jumping into our 4K tests, again, the CPU was nearly the second hottest, but really not that much hotter compared to the 1080p tests. And again, the GPU was surprisingly the second hottest in 4K, despite this being the least powerful GPU out of all of them. And looking at it from the perspective of the average temps across nine games gives you an even more broad overview of how well it did with cooling compared to the rest. Now for the performance and gaming benchmarks. This is the most important part of this review. For Geekbench 5, we got a single core score of 1868 and a multi-core score of 11,142. This was right in line with the others and quite a bit ahead of the Omen 25L. Cinebench R23, which simulates its 3D rendering power, we got a multi-core score of 15,492 and a single core score of 18 1886. Again, nowhere near what the CyberPower PC or Skytech Kronos could do, but it did win against the HP Omen 25L. Another great test for everybody that plans to be doing a lot of 3D rendering is the V-Ray benchmark. And understandably, it had the lowest score here as well, but I was a little taken back that it did better than the Omen 25L when it came to the performance score. For 3D Mark, which is a great benchmark for determining a computer's overall gameability, we got an overall score of 9033, a graphics score of 8523, and a CPU score of 13,671. And this is how it did against the others. Unfortunately, the absolute lowest here for the overall score and the graphics score. And for the main drive, the SSD that everything is stored on, I got speeds of 3.5 gigabits read and 2.4 gigabits write. I've definitely seen a lot better on the higher end machines, but for the budget PCs, this seems to be pretty average. Gaming benchmarks are what you probably care the most about though. And these were our average FPS results we got for several games at their highest presets in HD. The weakest performer here with the lowest FPS per game. And then the difference between this computer's FPS numbers and the other PCs grew even greater for our 1440p tests. And significantly lower in our 4K tests compared to all the others as well. Definitely the weakest and the least powerful overall, but the pricing difference may make it worth it for some. And here's a few Fusion benchmark tests for all you creatives out there. These scores represent the overall experience when it comes to DaVinci, Photoshop, and Premiere. Nothing too special here, but I guess at least it did better than the HP Omen 25L. I did some VR tests as well, and I'd say that overall, I had a pretty decent experience. Putting a number to it though is the best way to compare, and using the VR benchmark revealed a score of 12,548. This was the second lowest out of all the pre-built PCs that I've tested. Pros and cons. My overall top reasons you should not get this computer. Number one is performance. Compared to all the other pre-builds that I've tested in this category, this was the least impressive by far when it came to the overall actual performance. 
this. And number two is the design. In person, it kind of just comes off as a little cheap and cheesy. That's just my personal opinion on that though. My overall top reasons to get this computer, number one is the price. At $1250, it's definitely one of the most affordable performance PCs that I've reviewed so far. Well, aside from that CyberPower PC Gamer Master series that I reviewed, that one was only $800. The performance gains on this PC are worth the extra money though. My next pro is upgradability. This is kind of a starter setup with not very expensive components, but there really is a great amount of space for upgrades. Additional slots for three and a half inch hard drives, two and a half inch hard drives, and another slot for a second SSD. Eventually you're going to want to upgrade the 3060 GPU. And if you're a creator, you're probably going to want to fill in those extra RAM slots with more DDR4 RAM. My next pro is connectivity. This PC has ports out the wazoo, and I definitely don't think that you're going to run out of USB ports with how many they have on the back. Overall, this is a decent gaming PC that isn't the fastest or fanciest looking thing. And at $1250, it's not a horrible price, but I do think that it's worth it to go with that i7 3060 Ti CyberPower Gamer Extreme series, because honestly, that is a much better bang for your buck. Or just to have your significant other stop going to Starbucks for a few weeks. Now, if you do decide to purchase this computer or one of the others that I compared it to and this video helped you in any way, then please remember to purchase using my affiliate links in the comments and description below as I get a small commission at no cost to you for every single purchase made. And it's a major factor in keeping this channel going and getting better and better for you. Or if you just want to help support this channel and help keep it growing, then please consider becoming a channel member by clicking on the join button below. And I'd like to personally thank all of my monthly members for their monthly contributions to this channel. I really appreciate you guys. Every little bit helps. And remember, every week I do a giveaway that randomly selects someone who's interacted with this channel in some way or filled out the form in the description. So make sure to like, comment, and subscribe with notifications turned on to stay up to date with that, as well as staying up to date with all of my latest gaming PCs. And the winner for this week is... Million Miler. Thanks for watching, guys. I love you guys. God bless.